it's definitely worth, especially as a teacher, like uh, we realize often the influence is carried by a teacher going, I want this in my classroom. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think so often, I, I think the teachers might not necessarily feel like they are empowered to get that. And I'd really encourage the teachers to actually go and ask yeah. for the stuff that you want. If you can see something that's going to make life easier for you, um, we've often found like when we've tracked it from a teacher that's passionate about something, often it ends up in the school because that teacher took the effort to say, hey, this is going to make life easier for me and other teachers, it's going to help the learners, let's get it. Yeah. Hi. My name is Francois Nordea and I am a super teacher. And this is Super Teachers Unite, the show that's all about motivating, inspiring and supporting teachers. And with me today, I've got a super teacher of a different kind, Peter Morgan. He is the founder of School Advisor. Peter, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me and it's good to be on the show. Yeah, it's lucky to be in your offices. I'm down yeah. in Cape Town, so it's uh, also good. We've been working together for the last two years or so, and this is the first time we're really seeing each other in real life. So Yeah, everything else has been digital or email. Yes, which is, which is lovely to yeah. work in, in, in a time like this. Um, as you know, the first five to ten minutes of the show is all about providing value to teachers, and we'll be handing over to Peter very soon just to share some tips and ideas from his experience in working with schools and school suppliers and with teachers on what can provide value to teachers. So before we do that, let's educate. Peter, over to you. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I think it's such a great question and it's interesting. The, the place that we fall in is between schools and suppliers. So essentially, schools come to us looking for suppliers. And I think the biggest thing I could say to the schools out there is there are so many incredible products and services that are built with one thing in mind and that's making life easier for a teacher in his or her classroom. Mm -hmm. and, and I just think for, for teachers out there, I think it's the, the one thing we've seen is it's, it's sometimes when you're out and you're teaching and you're using tools, to go find new tools takes a lot of time and effort. And I think the one thing I'd like to say is it's, it's worth looking because there's other teachers out there that have started products, there's businesses that have started products, and they are there to make your life easier. So generally if there is a frustration in the classroom, there's more than likely a product or service out there that is actually being built to save that. Exactly. It's, it's such a frustration for teachers. We've got a lot of challenges that we deal with and we don't know that there are solutions to, to these challenges. And we don't often have time to go and search for these challenges. So knowing that there is a product or a service available that's going to assist us really is, is comforting. So how, how do we go about, if we've got a challenge, how do we go about knowing where's the solution? Yes, yeah. I think that's obviously you want to talk to other teachers, go to events, um, the product punt, mm -hmm. use school advisor to check out your need. I, I'm just thinking of a, a random example. So we hold events called Schoolscape. Um, and we did one recently for the IT managers and we had a new company there called Scotty Go okay. and they're all about coding but the most amazing thing is their product is actually a game that works offline so you can teach principles of coding without even an interactive whiteboard mm -hmm. and I think it's just there's, there's so many solutions out there like for a teacher to go okay I need to introduce coding into the classroom well, I don't have a whiteboard or I don't have internet, well, what do I do? Or I do, what else can I give each kid to do on their desk? Um, and that was to me just like stood out that there's like a, such a niche problem a teacher could have, but there's a solution for it. So, And I, I think there's always, or in many cases, there's this disconnect between the school leadership yeah. and the teacher. Many times the, the teacher knows what the frustration is and they know uh, exactly wh what the challenge is, but communicating that to the principal or to the head of the uh, school governing body is, is extremely difficult because they've got the challenges of knowing it has to remain within a budget. The school doesn't have money to always go to uh, or buy so many different uh, products from suppliers. Um, and, and I found that the communication between the teacher and the principal really needs to be strong in order to communicate the challenges that they have. I've actually got a, a tip on that and I'm just going to say to schools like my, my previous business I had was selling a product into schools. Um, 
And what we would often find is we would get a teacher really excited about the product and then he or she needed to go to the principal and mention it. But by the time they got there, the principal would ask one or two questions and the teacher would be like, okay, I need to go back and find out from the company. Uh, my recommendation is if you found something amazing that you want in your classroom, set up a meeting with the principal, with a person from their company. And, and we've just found it makes it so much easier. Generally, we've also seen if, if a principal has a teacher that's going like, hey, I love this product so much, please can I bring the business in or the company or whoever it is. Uh, from our experience, we've, we've seen that the principals are generally keen if there is a teacher who's passionate about it. And I think the tip is don't go by yourself, rather just bring in that company because somewhere along the line there's going to be a question you don't know then you have to go backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. This just kind of sorts it out yeah. in, in one gap and you've got more chance then as the teacher of actually having that product uh, in your classroom. Yeah. And do you, do you, in your experience, find that, that suppliers are quite open to coming into individual schools and talking to individual principals? Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell all the schools out there, um, suppliers are desperate <laughs> to speak. To, to schools, you know, I think they, they really want to get in and they've got an amazing offering, but their biggest challenge is, is finding time with the teacher or the principal. And I think, let's be real, you know, your average teacher out there or principal, it's class, it's teaching, it's sports, on the weekend of sports, you know, there's actually not much time. So often these suppliers are going, we've got this amazing product, we can't get anyone in the school to look at it. So our view is if you give them half an opportunity, they'll be there like this. Yeah. So they will come. And if they don't come, uh, my view would be, unless it's like a digital product that is sold online, if they don't want to come, then I would look at the company because I think what at the end of the day, you want to know if you're selling, if you're buying a product from a supplier, that you want to know that if something goes wrong, that that supplier is going to actually be there to help you. So just having them come in on meetings proves that they're in the area, that they're available. Exactly. So you actually build that trust prior to them or you having the product. So if, if, if the supplier doesn't even do the, the, the effort yeah. to come and sell the product to you, what kind of post-sale yeah. service are you going to get from them anyway? And, and you know, you can also use a, a, a Skype video or a Google Hangout or a Zoom, but what you want to see from that supplier is there's an active interest of like, I'm available, I'm available to explain this to you, to the principal, whoever, and exactly as you say, it just shows that more than likely they're going to be there for you for the long haul, which is I think, we see so many times you like you get these knock and drops. Mm -hmm. You know, someone buys a product and then you never see the company again. And that's the one thing I think all schools are very cautious about. Yeah, because teachers don't have the time to deal yeah. with these issues. As you just said, we've got teaching, we've got extra murals, yeah. we're dealing with the kids, we're dealing with the parents. We cannot now still also be dealing with suppliers. Yeah. And I think that's a big thing, you know, if you, if you look at just like a school as a, an environment, it is, it's crazy, you know what I mean? You've got the equivalent of like a gym like Virgin Active, you know, you've got sports fields, um, you've got, you know, for the average school, maybe 60, 100 staff members, that's like a big business in anyone's mm -hmm. term. Uh, and then you've got like all the pupils running around and all their parents, you know, you need tech, you need this. There are so many suppliers that need to service all of that. You know, uh, we, we often joke that if, if for every one supplier, there's must be two or three that are trying to get in with the same business. So it's not unusual for a, a kind of a management person within a school to have like three people calling them a day or emailing them, trying to get their product in there. So I think there's, there's a lot of pressure uh, for these suppliers on the schools just because schools are busy and don't have time to see them. Um, I, I'm quite interested about this because from a teacher's perspective, I kind of deal with suppliers in the sense of like textbooks or educational type of, of products. But a school is more than just the, the academic aspect of it. What other types of, of suppliers normally want to get into schools or work or support schools? Well, it's funny. So on school advisor side, literally, um, we can see quote requests coming through. So we've got uh, essentially like one place where a school can go type in what they want and then we match them to the three suppliers um, and it's funny seeing what the requests are you know generally we break it up into thirds a third is actually stuff around fences the facilities tarring asphalt new ceilings painting curtains for the hall so it's stuff to do with the, the facilities um, a third then is generally the IT products 
you know, if it be a school that's saying, okay, we need interactive whiteboards or we need better Wi-Fi or uh, we need the kind of... Uh, the tablets, you know, whatever it is, we, we see a lot in that space. And it's also like random stuff. Like often like we've seen stuff like there's Wi-Fi on one side of the school but not on the other. How do you get it across? And also things like within that IT space, and I think a big trend is the role of the IT managers growing. You know, like small things like the security system, mm -hmm. if you put up cameras, it actually plugs into the IT space. So one third is facilities, one third is IT, and these are the quotes we've seen. And then the other is what you're thinking more of uh, the textbooks, the stationery, paper, pens, pencils. Mm -hmm. So there is just so much art there. And we've had funny things. We've had like literally an art teacher needing a new sink yeah. <laughs> to electric fences to, oh man, a uh, school the other day, special needs school. Um, they needed weighted jerseys. So for the kids to feel like they've been comforted. You know, that's a request coming through us. So there is just so much that a school needs. Wonderful. It's, it's, it's exciting to, to, to get to know that aspect of the school as well. And I think teachers don't often deal with that unless they're in some sort of managerial position, yes. moving into like deputy yeah. principal level, principal level, then they start dealing with, with these suppliers. I, I, I would just on that, I'd even say to the schools, like it's, it's definitely worth, especially as a teacher, like a, we realize often the influence is carried by a teacher going, I want this in my classroom. Um, but I think so often, I, I think the teachers might not necessarily feel like they are empowered to get that. And I'd really encourage the teachers to actually go and ask yeah. for the stuff that you want. If you can see something that's gonna make life easier for you, um, we've often found like when we've tracked it from a teacher that's passionate about something, often it ends up in the school because that teacher took the effort to say, hey, this is going to make life easier for me and other teachers, it's going to help the learners, let's get it. Yeah, so that, that's a big, big note. It's like when you're passionate about something, when you've got a challenge and you've found a possible solution for it, like drive it. Go to the principal yeah. and if you do the research on your own and then go to the principal and tell them, listen, there's a possible solution. You have a voice. You've got agency and you can make the difference in, in, in get these systems into your classroom or into the school that's going to make your life easier. Yeah, and also, <laughs> sneaky tip, if you find something you really love, the supplier will most probably give one class it for free. Yeah. So, <laughs> just say, listen, just how about you give it to my class for the next year to try out, and then we'll take it to the rest of the school. Yeah, and and the, the, you'll get it. the drug dealer principle. <laughs> it's like the first one's for free. <laughs> and then when I get you hooked, it's done. Uh, get it into the old school. Do you have another business on the side? <laughs> I'm not, we're not going into that at all. <laughs> but thank you very much. I think this is valuable. I think teachers and schools in general will really find value from this. But now we need to get to know Peter Morgan. Okay. Your origin story. Why have you started School Advisor? What is your, your interest in education? You as a person, where do you come from? Okay. So I ended up in the education and entrepreneurial space actually by mistake. Um, so I studied, um, actually when I was, I think, kind of at university, I was like, do I want to go into teaching or do I want to go into marketing and advertising? And at that point, I, I made the shift to marketing and advertising and I feel like I've come back kind of full circle. What was your, what was your, your, your reason for the decision? Because I find that very interesting because a lot of people have this on this precipice of the two decisions yeah. and then there's something that, that just makes you make the decision. What do you yeah, think that was? I don't know, I, I, I'm just trying to think, but I think offhand, both sides, I love dealing with people, and I love the, the kind of the creativity of that, of inspiring and working with people. So I think that's why teaching was of interest, like mm -hmm. that you could impact and actually leave a legacy past yourself. And then I think on the marketing side, just kind of thinking how business works, how to connect it with other businesses. Um, and at the end, I think that maybe caught my eye more was this idea of like, well, there's so much happening out there. How do you, how do you kind of tell a story and create a product or service that people actually want and will use and it will impact their life? So I think that kind of caught me at the end. Very interesting. Uh, and yeah, that's what I had peace prayed about it. I think that was kind of what caught me. Wonderful. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so yeah, from there, I ended up in the film industry. 
Okay. Yeah, so on the marketing side of films, I worked on the film sets and stuff for Faith Like Potatoes yeah. movie, the Hansi movie. So that was really exciting. But the problem is, as a marketer, you only have a job when there's a movie. Yeah. <laughs> so the movies ran out, so I needed to find something. And that's when I happened um, to co found a business called D6, the school communicator. Oh, okay. So, so you were co-founder of D6? Yes. So I, I did not know that before this interview. Oh, well, there we go. Yeah. So we, myself and a friend, Leon, we were doing kind of starting businesses in the entrepreneurial space and doing stuff with newspapers. He had something with schools, I had with universities. And one day we met this guy called Mark and he was building this product for corporates. Back in this day, now this was pre... Um, Smartphone. Okay. This was actually at the launch of BlackBerry. You know, it was that far ago. So, like in the nineties. <laughs> no, not that far ago. No, so, like two thousand and eight. Okay. Which is amazing that we've only had smartphones for that short period. Yeah, yeah, time. true. Um, so we met this guy, and he had built a desktop app that pops up when you turn on your computer and can give you news. Okay. And he was doing it for the big corporates, and then one day he showed us what he did for his kids' school. Basically, his oh. wife was standing in the line at a parent-teachers meeting, talking to the person behind you. I think I've got the story right. And out of it, they were like, but can't your husband build something to improve communication? And he, on the whim, adapted his technology for the school environment. And that was the very first school communicator, which was a, a desktop app. And by chance, myself and this other guy, Leon, saw this and we were like, no, this thing has got to make life easier for schools. There's no way it can't. Yeah. You know what I mean? And at that point, we formed a business with Mark. Uh, we bought an, a financier who had a family member join within the business. Uh, and the four of us went out um, completely clueless of the education space and what schools go through. And that was kind of the start of my playing in the education space. And a lot of time was spent going to schools, showcasing the product, the service, um, and through that, I, I think I kind of learned that all about schools, how many needs they have out there, and how big a challenge procurement is. Yeah. Um, and I think so, exited um, uh, D6 and sat around going, well, what should I do? And spent a lot of time kind of praying and thinking. And then at the end, I said, man, surely there's a way to help schools when it comes to finding products and services. Mm -hmm. Surely we can solve that. And that was the start of School Advisor. Wonderful. That's right. such an a, a interesting entrepreneurial journey. Yeah. It's exactly this aspect of um, seeing needs and then finding ways to solve it. Yeah. And I, I think that was it. And I think, you know, the, the D6, the school communicator works so well because it's, you know, it, it solved a massive problem for schools with communication, saved them hours. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we were often actually sitting in schools with D6 and selling it. And we'd be sitting waiting for governing body meetings and then we'd meet all the other companies trying to also bring their product and service. And there's so much innovative, amazing stuff out there that has just kind of blew my mind. So, and I think so often the schools just don't know about that. So mm -hmm. a lot of this is actually just for us with school advisors going, well, here's a whole pile of tools out there that you could be using. Um, and also from that then the business has grown. You know, we now run an event called Schoolscape. You know, so often we just attended events mm -hmm. um, and we thought there's no event that's purely focused on schools meeting amazing suppliers. Um, and also we often went to events and we were like, but you know, teachers taking a day out of school or a bursa or the head or the head of IT, they need to be spoiled. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we were like, well, let's make our stock standard that there's going to be a barista with good coffee. You know what I mean? Like, If you want to reach teachers, you give them coffee. You give them coffee because that's what we love. It runs in our veins. So we, we, we realized it was good coffee, nice food and out of school. You know, it mustn't be in a school, so we, we use wine farms and country clubs and really nice venues. But that was something that just grew out of the space of introducing products and services. Uh, and we always try to find partners, like, um, so our last event we actually had an IT manager from a school and he was like, hey, can't we do this in the IT space? We're like, yes, mm -hmm. come help us. So there's a lot that's grown out of it, but I think, yeah, a lot was out of that going like there's a need how do we try and meet that in, in a way that actually helps schools uh, and helps those innovative suppliers? Yeah. 
No, it's, it's extremely interesting and I like this idea of events where teachers get spoiled. Um, it's, it's difficult. Well, being a teacher, of course, I'm, I'm going to be uh, biased towards yeah. that. But, but we really have a tough job. Yeah. People, people don't, but people underestimate the job the teachers do and how, how mentally and physically tough it is yeah. to teach for an entire day. Now, I'm not moaning, oh, please, somebody just give us a hug. That's not what we're looking yeah. for. But, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but when we have the opportunity to get out of the classroom and get involved with events like this, it's good to know that people are valuing teachers. Yes. Yeah, and I, I think that's one thing. Like, we, we realize there's a whole pile of products out there, but you know to take a teacher out we need to take them out and they need to come away from from the event going wow i made amazing products i was spoiled and i think from our side we realized teachers flip you guys need to be spoiled you know just for the ones dealing with my kids I know the pain <laughs> they go through. So, and i think that's something also that that the suppliers are recognizing you know and i think also being in our present country and environments like the teachers are out there are actually doing something amazing you know mm -hmm. what i mean like they really are putting their heart and soul into it so for us to take a teacher out of the classroom or a principal or a bursar or the it manager or the facilities manager then we need to make sure that they feel appreciated on the day um so we also do another sneaky thing at the events we we try mm -hmm. stay away just from education talks so yeah. often our events we'll bring in a magician or a comedian driving home a big point but just making it quite exciting so they can come to an event, they can feel appreciated um, with good coffee. Some of our events actually have wine tastings at the end. Also, to... that's the other one. If you want to win over a teacher, you go the wine route. Absolutely. Coffee during the day, wine at night and over the weekend. So, in fact, our, our last uh, event, our main one, Schoolscape Premier, uh, which happened in um, kind of Feb March, Cape Town Joburg, we uh, actually got uh, the winemaker from Bayer's Clough, Bayer's Tritter, and he was the speaker, and then afterwards everyone could taste a glass or two of his wine. Yeah, Wonderful. And I think that's, that's extremely important. We are so um, saturated with p professional development when we're at school yes. that you need that breakaway. Uh, you, we, are, you, we are humans. We are, holistically, we need development as well. So I like that idea. And also, I think that's why uh, it just comes back to the first point. I think there are so many companies out there that recognize the needs of teachers and are going, how can we make it easy in the classroom? How, how can we make you as a teacher more effective? How can we support you? And I think that's kind of what, as a company, excites us. Like if we can introduce a teacher to just one company that can make life easier, well, maybe we've saved 10 minutes of his or her time in a day. That's game changing. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think one of the big challenges for the suppliers that don't really connect um, with teachers or with schools are the ones who are not talking to teachers or schools. If you really want to know how to make a difference in a teacher's life, ask them. Yes. Ask yeah. them what do they need yeah. and then how can you solve it. Work with teachers, bring them as part of your, your R&D team and see if that doesn't uh, create a better product for the teacher. Yeah. And it's actually interesting that you, you're saying that, Francois. At our events moving forward, we're actually creating space for the teachers to tell the suppliers what they want mm -hmm. and what challenges they are facing in the classroom. Because I think that's, that's a big thing. You know, you've got these companies that are innovative and creative, but sometimes they miss it. They think they're creating the next best thing, but it's... No, it's, 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 so, it's ideological and not yeah. practical. They don't yeah. get into the dirt and get yes. to know what the, the effect of it in, in the classroom yeah. is. And even like we, we happy, you know, and I think school advisor knows we, we, we play a point there. If, if there's a need that you've seen in the school environment that you're not finding someone, please let us know. Maybe there is someone already doing it, or maybe it's something we could let some mm. of our suppliers go, hey, this is a massive need for teachers. Uh, who's who can meet who's working in that space yeah. yeah so what I'll do is in the description of this video on Facebook and on YouTube and in the show notes on the website we'll put all of the details to school advisors so that you guys can link through and get yeah. to get access to them Peter you don't know about this part now, all of our all of our guests uh, run through this quick fire round of questions they haven't prepared for this whatsoever so uh, we are going to jump into the quick fire questions quickly what would you say is your superpower Oh, ability to connect schools with amazing suppliers that can make a difference in their school. Excellent. What do you reckon is the biggest challenge for education in our country? 
Oh man, I think there's so many. I, I don't know, I think our biggest challenge at the moment is keeping incredible teachers in the classroom. Yeah. I think if we can keep incredible teachers in the classroom and incredible principals in the school, we will win. And yeah, I think that's, that's our biggest challenge, how we can keep you in yeah. the classroom. Yeah, retaining excellent yeah. super teachers. And that's yeah. why we've got this community. Let's yeah. support each other because I feel good teachers often feel alienated because they want to be innovative, they want to do things differently, but because the rest of the staff is so mediocre and they really get back um, a pushback, yeah. that they don't feel confident enough to really be excellent. Yeah, and I think it's also like, if you, if you think of the opportunity a teacher has to shape a kid for the future of this country, you know what I mean? Like, I'm in South Africa, I'm staying, I love this country, I want to put my all into it, and I think, uh, the amount of time just my children have with teachers and we, we're blessed to have incredible teachers, you know what I mean? And I just think any teacher out there needs a flipping high five and, uh, you know, whatever, just keep going, you know what I mean? The the impact that they're having. So I, I agree and I'm, I'm loving this environment of just helping and inspire teachers, I think is amazing. Wonderful. What would you reckon is one of the highlights of education in our country? We. Oui. Uh, highlights of education. Yeah, like what? What is the? We just went the the negative route, and I hate talking about the negative stuff, but we we, we can't just shy away from it. But like the positives in education, what would you what would you rate as being one of the positive things in education? I, I think in South Africa we just have so, and I'm going to tie back onto the product side. Like I don't know if the, a lot of the teachers out there know, but some of the the products and services we have here are on like the best of the best in the world and are starting to go overseas mm -hmm. you know what i mean I, I i think we are on the cutting edge of so much and there's there's so much of like kind of ideas and agility and like things that teachers are sparking that are having an impact way bigger than south africa and i i think as, as south africa we understand developing developed we understand the full spectrum you know and the stuff that we do here and get right here is actually exportable around the world so i, I think there's some kind of quite exciting stuff that we're doing in south africa that's actually built and bred here and it's going to go out. And it's got glo borders. global applicability. Yes. And I think that's a very important thing for South Africa in general, is that people think, oh, shame, South Africa, like this developing country. But we actually have this opportunity to leapfrog because we have certain challenges that the rest of the world doesn't necessarily have. And if we find the solutions to that, we, we really can use that in different settings. Yeah. Right. So you have got an unrestricted budget, okay? all the money in the world and you are commissioned to build a school, what would that school look like? What would your ideal Your school look like? I think that's amazing. I, I think first thing first, um, I would recruit the best of the best when it comes to management and teachers. Like I would go out far and wide to look for them. And I think this is also, you know, like uh, I remember that I, I work quite closely with a with a former headmaster and he says Pete you don't understand schools until you've taught a Friday afternoon from like two to three with a bunch of boys that are just wanting the weekend to start yeah. and it's a hot day so I think uh, you know to keep them engaged and learning is the hardest thing ever so I think first thing unlimited budget I'd go find the best teachers and then I would think tank what they would want mm -hmm. and I, I'd nearly even propose creating an environment that works around them their style their needs um, yeah because I, I, I think there's teachers that are passionate about stuff and let them loose and I think they would do amazing stuff so I absolutely love that I think that's the best answer I've heard in a yeah. while Thank you so much for that. Peter, uh, this is the end of the show. Thank you so much for taking cool. time out of your Thanks busy day um, to spend time with me and to yeah. provide value for teachers. Thank you very much to everybody who watched the episode and uh, was part of the show up until the end. Remember, if you're a super teacher or you'd like to be a super teacher, unite under this one banner and let's create a community of super teachers so that we can go and make a difference in each and every classroom. Be sure that if you like this to uh, leave a comment, like it, subscribe, follow, share. I would absolutely appreciate that. My name is Francois Nodea and this is Peter Morgan and we are Super Teachers. Thanks everybody.